What's up, everybody? It is Tuesday, November 28th, and I am here to break down the five-game DFS slate in the NBA tonight. It's uh, not the best slate in the world. Uh, two games don't have lines, so I put in some phony lines for this exercise. And I don't know, it's just not really the the best games. Like, fun stuff to watch, but... You know, injuries have made some things sort of weird. Um, but let's get into it. So the first game of the night, uh, the only 7 o'clock game, which sucks. I wish one of those games was a little bit later. I always like a night where we get a later lock. But uh, Cavs and Heat, Cavs on the back-to-back, -back, they are four-point favorites. They've got a 106.5 implied total. For me right now, that's second. Um, we'll see where the Bulls and Suns and the Wolves and Wizards lines end up. I feel like they'll be somewhere in this area, but we shall see. Um, it should come as no surprise that the first place that we need to look for the Cavs is Braun. Um, so I want to pull up the uh, pull up the the shot profile for the Cavs. Take a look at how that matches up against the Heat. Um, I just, you know, just off the top of my head without having looked at anything, I assume that Giannis will be the chalkiest small forward play. I feel like people will get off of Braun a little bit because of the back to back. Okay, so. Miami is going to give up a bunch of extra shots in the mid-range, potentially the sh specifically the short mid-range, um, and they are amazing at defending the three. They actually give up 16% less than league average three-point attempts. And if this wasn't the second game of a back-to-back, -back, Dwayne Wade would look really good. Um, but it wouldn't shock me if he didn't even play. Although, interesting narrative with Miami coming to town. Or in Miami, that would be a different story. Ooh, um, I don't think that I like anything from the Cavs. I mean, I could end up on LeBron, obviously, but probably not. And then, you know, like, love isn't the best fit. Microphone's in the way, I can't see something. You know, like, the amount of threes that the Cavs jack. Love doesn't spend too much time. I mean, 31% of his shots in the mid-range. Not bad. Um... I think if I were going to look at anybody, it would probably be Kevin Love. He could, pro he could see a lot of minutes against like Kelly Olynyk, which, you know, Kevin Love is just like the best version of Kelly Olynyk. What Kelly Olynyk aspires to be. Yeah, I don't... I don't think I'm putting a single cab on the short list. I don't think that's where I'm going to make any money tonight. So let's hop to Miami. Miami is the same sort of way. I don't there's nothing here that's interesting. See their breakdown. And the heat are obviously kind of weird. I've got white side projected for like a tiny ass amount of minutes. Um, 25. You know, I know he was nursing a, like a knee or an ankle in the last time out. Olenek got a little extra burn. But, you know, that's hard to project. So, all right, people that shoot the three are going to be in a little bit better shape. 
particularly corner threes. Cleveland giving up 15% more corner threes than league average. Um, I tend to limit you from the mid-range. So, man, I would love, like, Olenek would look amazing if there was some, like, late white side news. But for now, I think Josh Richardson is in play. And, on, you know, on a five-game slate like this, the short list is... Not as short as it should be. But I think Josh Richardson looks like someone that has at least the potential for a good game. And actually, if you're looking for a, a punt-ish option from salary at least, let's take a look at Wayne Ellington. I might change this now, but Josh Richardson stinkers in his last three in four out of his last five in five out of his last six maybe i shouldn't roster josh richardson he needs 21 to hit 5x which he has done in one of the past five gate six games but he had seven so six what does he have in the last three total 20.7 so he hasn't hit 5x if you add up his last three games, I smell somebody that's due. And then Wayne needs 16, nope, that's not right, 17.5 to hit value. Uh, he's been over 20 in three of his last four. He's been getting big minutes lately. Um, let's just not pay as much attention to Josh Richardson. It's really hard for me to say that. Richardson. Richardson. Ow, ow, brown cow. It's too early for this stuff, guys. This is video number two. Um, Wayne Ellington looks like he's in an amazing spot tonight. Only 3,500. Um, 89% of his shots are from three, which fit perfectly against the Cavs. If he's going to get, you know, I've got him in for 26 minutes. But, you know, he played 30 the last time out, 27 the game before that. He's in a really, really good spot. What am I missing? Yeah, I... Fire up Wayne Ellington. It's not even injury news. Can you imagine if, like, Waiters was out? Huh. Be all over Wayne. I guess that's enough about this game. I won't watch it. Bulls Suns. Um, no line on the game, probably because of Devin Booker. Uh, yeah, I figure somewhere in the hundreds. These two teams are god awful. This is going to be a tricky one. The eight o'clock games are probably going to be the chalkiest games. And I don't even know how to hash some of this out. So we'll take a look at the Suns' defense first. So let's pull up the Bulls' shot chart. Um, I don't... It's so hard to, like, map out a way that this game goes because both teams are so bad. They're so bad. Acronym is. Okay, so Suns are going to limit threes and give up a bunch at the rim. Uh, I think this looks like a good spot for Robin Lopez. I, prob I can see this being okay for Jerry and Grant. And 
that's probably it. Yeah, let's take a look at Lopez and Grant. Um, Lopez needs 25 to hit 5x. He's been over that once in his past seven. He got close in his last game out. So playing, you know, shorter minutes. We've got him at 27 minutes. The Suns are obviously not the best team in the world, so I think that probably helps Lopez out a bit. Um, he's somebody I'm going to look at at center. That's 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 a downside scenario. And then, what did I say? Jerry and Grant, 4,700. He needs 23 and a half. Put up 31 his last time out. I already forgot what he needs. 23 and a half. Whoa. Sorry, guys. Uh, he's done it two out of his last his last two games. His minutes have picked up a little bit in that time as well. So if that continues, and I've got him at 26 minutes, I think that's a good spot. Let's take a look at Suns. Again, I, right now I have Booker projected as in because this would be a really awful exercise otherwise. But... And he has said that he, you know, he expects to play. Suns are tricky. Um, they're more interesting if Booker doesn't play, at least from a fantasy perspective. But they're just in disarray. So Bulls are going to give up a couple extra threes, uh, some long mid rangers, and then just in mid range in general, they're going to thin that out. really like anything I'm seeing here. Why is it showing Bledsoe? Oh, yeah, this is because he used to be on the team. Interesting. And he plays today. Weird. I get it. Um, yeah, like, I don't love... I don't love Booker or Warren... Although, Booker at 71. Salary been doing. Okay, so he's down a little bit, which is exciting. It's 35 and a half. He's done it two out of his last five. I'm going to say this is a throwaway because of the injury. I can make shit up like that. So, I might actually be okay with Booker. Probably it. Pricing's tight. Yeah, I'm gonna take a, a deeper look at Devin Booker. I don't like love it or anything, but um, I think he might just be in play because of shooting guard and the particular slate. Yeah. I mean, everything looks awful on DK. I don't want any part of any of these guys. I don't think it's a good spot for TJ Warren, although I wouldn't be shocked if he played well. Yeah, I don't I don't know. The Suns are tricky. They've just got two at every position, and not all of those two are any good. Minnesota and Washington... Uh, this also doesn't have a line yet. Uh, I assume that's because of Jeff Teague. Um, if Teague is out, you know, obviously we want to play uh, Tyus Jones. Um, and this is another team where 
or this is the game that's probably going to be the heaviest chalk. So let's pull up Minnesota's shot chart. I don't know why I'm calling it a shot chart. There's it's, there's not a there's no chart anywhere. Shot table. You know, obviously Washington has uh, no John Wall. So there are some obvious things that need to happen on that end. Um, you know, the Wizards' defense just isn't particularly good. I assume that it's only going to get worse with... Or, they're just average. But I expect it to get a little bit worse with Wall out. Um, you know, no surprise. We're only looking at five guys here. Six if... Uh, if Teague doesn't play, but I mean, Towns should be in line for a pretty sizable game. And I feel like Taj can really give the Wizards some, uh, some problems. I feel like Taj is the type of guy that Markeith Morris like really doesn't enjoy playing against. Some dude that's gonna like make him work and and be aggressive. So I'm gonna say right now that I like Towns and Taj. Um Wiggins at 6,800. Let me just make sure those Taj and Towns things aren't too crazy. Taj needs 26 and a half. Um, he's done that basically three times in his last seven with the ability to go big. He's playing big minutes. Wish his salary was a little lower. Towns at 95. Uh, needs 47 and a half. He's done it twice in his last seven. Um... He should have a field day. To, like, who's going to, who can guard? He doesn't, there's no one on that team that can guard him. And not even credibly. He should absolutely eat the shit out of Gortat. What, where would Gort, I love Towns tonight. He, he should just boss Washington. What's he done in the past? Because, I mean, Washington's pretty much the same team. 59.6 against them in March of this year. Yeah, I love Towns. He's going to be super chalky, I think. Love it. Now if we go to Washington, this one is going to be a little bit more obvious. So... Tim Frazier, I'm not even looking anything else up. He's going to get 30 plus minutes. He's under 5,000 in salary. Uh, he needs 24 and a half to hit 5x. Um, he's just a value play. But uh, DK, especially, fire him up. But we're going to need to look at the shot chart. And I need to see if Beal's salary is moved. So he's at 8,300. Okay, so he's up from 7,600. $700, okay. Still in play. Okay, so... Minnesota is going to give up corner threes. Other than that, it's neutral. Oddly enough, that fits Markeith Morris more than anybody else. He is getting extra minutes. What do we need out of Morris? Because I wouldn't want to go, like, I wouldn't do Gibson and Morris. It's going to need to be one or the other. Um, and at 
basically comparable salaries. You're, you're sort of just making a pick between the two. Markeith Morris put up 19 in 30 minutes. He needs 26, which he did do in his second to last game. Done it twice in his last six. I think the minutes are going to be there. So, depending on how the rest of the lineups get built, you know, it could be a swap from one to the other. Uh, Beal, obviously, I need to look at him. Um, you know, he doesn't do the things that are of a benefit, but they don't really have anything that's like a major detriment either. God, why is that formatting not staying? Um, it, look, you still have to take Bradley Beal. I think the salary is going to go up a lot more than $700. And then I don't, you know, Otto Porter, I don't love. Gortok grades out well, but I can't imagine taking him tonight. What does he need? 24 and a half. He's done it four out of his last six. Had an off game the last time out, but put up 30 plus three in a row. What's his history against Towns look like? That's an interesting pay down if you want to go like Frazier, uh, Wayne, some other cheap dude, and try somehow to fit in Braun and Giannis. It's a hit or miss. 22 minutes in that one. You fouls? No. You get hurt? Laid an egg in his projection, so I don't know. Um, I think Gortat is worth a look. His salary fits. It, just a quick sidebar. Um, you know, I'm obviously making a short list, and I just put two competing power forwards against each other, two centers against each other. And they are obviously, I would imagine... The center specifically, but they're going to be like negatively correlated. When one does well, naturally they're probably taking away opportunities from the other in, it, in whatever small way possible. And, you know, that's okay because the key component to all of this is salary. We're not, I'm not necessarily rostering anybody because <clears throat> I think that today is the day that they're going to go for, I think Gortat's going to score 45 fantasy points. Like People that say stuff like that are just out of their mind. You're making plays based on a realistic set of expectations, but salary is the main component to it all. If Marcin Gortat's salary was $6,000, he's not rosterable. It has nothing to do with what you expect his performance to be tonight. It's literally just because of his salary. Salary drives everything. So I have to look at Gortat at 4,900 if that's the way the lineup fits because his most reasonable set of projections lands in a wheelhouse where more often than not, I think that he has an opportunity to provide value just because of that $4,900. Um, people, I think some people forget about salary a lot because it doesn't really tie to the basketball game. It's just like an arbitrary number assigned by FanDuel or DraftKings or whoever. But really, it's the most important number because it dictates the rest of your decisions. So that's why I can think Towns and Gortat are both in a good spot, even though they're going to negatively impact each other. I would never put them in the same lineup together. Like if if FanDuel had two, point, like two at every position, including center, You'd never take Marcin Gortat and Towns at the same time in a cash lineup. It's 
I don't want to say that it's suicide, but like that's sort of what it is. Um, but that doesn't mean that you, you can't still like both of them. That's all dependent on salary. That's my rant. Um, yeah, so I think Morris Beal and Gortat need looks, but this is going to be a game that's hit pretty heavily. His last two games are not going to be games that I hit very heavily. Sacktown on a back-to-back. De'Aaron -back. Uh, Fox on DK, I guess, looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the Kings. This game does have a line. The I had to enter that incorrectly, right? There is absolutely no way that the Kings are the favorites in this game. No way. Yeah. Entered it very wrong. I flip-flopped uh, Denver and Utah. Makes sense. Cause that was ridiculous. So the Bucks are seven point favorites. And Utah are two point favorites against Denver. Really? Wow. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So um, Kings have the worst implied total on the night, 95.75. Um, Ignore what I just said about De'Aaron Fox. Well, don't ignore, like, I just mean his projection isn't as rosy as it looked before. I need the Kings shooting table. Now I got it. I don't anticipate having very much here. Um... Corner threes and getting to the rim. Milwaukee gives up. No wonder Milwaukee's defense is utter shit. They're giving up the easiest three that you could possibly take and the most buckets at the rim. Get it together, Jason Kidd. So... Basically, no one on the Kings really takes any corner threes outside of Garrett Temple. Um, I've got him at 29 minutes. He is projected poorly because he's Garrett Temple. Um, needs 18 and a half. He's hit that in two of his last seven. So, on a five-game slate, I have to keep him in play because you know you have to roster somebody. Um, and I think Temple fits the best at 3,700, 3,500 on DK. And then I think Willie Cauley Stein, maybe. I mean, he's, what's his, he's 6,300. Like, I'd probably rather have Gortat. But he's going to have some opportunities. I don't see it. That's it for me. I can't. It's the Kings. I, I say this every night, but they're not good for cash. <laughs> Milwaukee. And I'm excited to take a look at this because I don't really have any idea of how Giannis is going to uh, match up here. I'm hoping well so that I can just avoid Braun again and turn myself into the, the ultimate... Uh, LeBron James fader. So Sacramento is going to let you bomb threes. They are 13, they're giving up 13% more attempts from three than a league average team, which is great. Um, So yeah, Giannis is uh, definitely in play. I know that people are probably seeing that. It's like, oh, there's a lot of red there. Um, that is very true. I will never be able to type that. Um, but like, it, it's only sh highlighting red. It, it'll highlight red uh, if this is negative at all. So like, their league average here. 
they're basically league average here. Um, they limit long mid-range shots, so that doesn't, like, for Middleton, this is a problem, um, as he takes a lot of long mid-range shots, or just mid-range shots in general. So I, I'm not super interested in Chris Middleton tonight, but I can see, you know, if he can transition those long mid-range shots into a step, take a step back and bomb those for threes, that's interesting. Um, Tony Snell. 30 minutes, 3,800, needs 19 to hit 5x. Done it in his last one. He's done it in two of his last five. So I think Snell is a nice, an interesting punt category guy. Um, Bledsoe. Bledsoe. He needs 35. He's at 7,000. How much has his salary gone up? A lot. 500. Needs 35. Done it in four of his last five. I don't see any reason why he can't be in line for a really good game. Finally, we're going to move over to Jazz and Nugs. Um, this is a pretty low priority game for me. Line is Jazz favored by two at home. Um, Donovan Mitchell at 6,500 on DraftKings looks really nice. He needs 36 and a half to hit value. He's Done well on Fandle at least. He's done that twice in his last six. He's been up over 30. Um, we've got him at 32 minutes, which I'm hoping his minutes rebound here. That's just, I feel bad for the Jazz. No Rudy Gobert. Like, that's just, that's not good for the league. He's such a unique player. So yeah, I'm I'm definitely in for some Donovan Mitchell, if possible. They give up a bundle of corner threes. That really fits Joe Ingles. If this could be a game where Joe Ingles gets, you know, like some fluky steals, he could be in a situation where he puts up a bundle of fantasy points. Um, other than that, I think favors is a little interesting. Not like a short list guy, but I do like him. I think Ingles and Mitchell are the only two guys I'm going to look at there. And if I move over to Denver, um, you know, obviously we don't have Mills, we won't have Millsap for a couple months. Uh, the most important guy we're going to be looking at here is Jokic, because if he's got a good, if he's in a good spot, which he should be without Gobert, uh, he might be more appealing than Towns. Type their own team in. A lot of silence right now. Don't have much to say. It's been a long day and a half. T talking to myself. I'm going crazy. Okay. So, Nuggets. Okay. Uh, Jokic is in a pretty good spot. You know, he likes to do a lot close to the basket, not necessarily at the rim, which is a great spot to be 
when a team loses like the best defensive center in basketball. <laughs> so yeah, Jokic is now in play for me. Uh, he needs 46 and a half to hit 5x. He has done that once in his last five. He did have a 40 point game here. Um, I feel pretty good about him. And then if we want to take a look at someone like it's not like my favorite spot for Gary Harris but he might be okay he needs 30 which he's done three out of his last five he's at 6,000 in salary I kinda like him there I don't really see any down the line guys that jump off the page for me um, probably it it's not really the best game so that's a pretty narrow short list um, I will take a peek at what my uh, what my optimal looks like if I run it now. Hey, I don't call Gary Payton Gary Payton or whatever the hell. He's just Gary Payton. Oh, old Gary Payton doesn't matter anymore. That's a lot of red. Okay, so I'm okay with most of that, but I don't want Portis or Justin Holiday. Giving me brawn. So let's grab Giannis instead. Let's lock in some of these interesting punt guys. Put Wayne Ellington in there. Which I'd imagine opens up a lot of interestingness. Frazier's already there. Eric Bledsoe's already there. Deal in. Let's see where we end up there. Um, hash that out a little bit. Make the other small. Whoa, there's a lineup with Braun and Giannis. <laughs> I'd rather pay up at center. Um, let's get Joe Ingles in there. Now I need to figure out power forward. Holy shit, I don't like anybody at power forward. <laughs> uh, if only Taj and Marquise were playing each other, this would be better. That might be my placeholder right now. Power forward sucks tonight. I need to... So this is going to be my big... Uh, my big project for today. Figuring out who to roster at power forward. Lowry Markinen at 6,900 is the highest salary guy. There are four centers higher than that. Gonna be interesting, folks. Um, but that's a lot of what my final lineup's gonna look like if there isn't any new news. Um, 
figuring this quagmire out is it's going to be interesting. But there are two guys in here somewhere that I'm going to have to lock in and build around. Because it's, and it can't be, to me, it can't be Markeef and Taj. So, figure it out. That's all I got for today. I've been going on for way too long for a five game slate. Um, so, please, if you made it to this point, please like this video. Um, subscribe if you want. Follow me on Twitter. Link to the projections is in the comments section. I showed this in the recap video, but I'd like to show uh, the people on this video as well. Um, over the middle of the night, I hit 10,000 total views, which means that I am officially being in. Re I'm in review for monetization, which means every time I put out one of these little videos, I'll get like 40 cents of crappy ad revenue, which is fun for me because I this is just like a hobby this is just something I want to do it makes me pay attention more and it allows me to interact with everybody and, and get other people's ideas and thoughts and it's a medium I never thought that I would be using and now I cannot picture stopping um, I have a bunch of ideas for putting out other content whether it's other fan other DFS content or you know, just probably sports in general. It's always been something that's been interesting to me. So stuff like Let's Plays of, you know, Football Manager or maybe NBA 2K. Um, there aren't... Sorry, Wolverine Studios. I've never really enjoyed your basketball sim. But maybe, I'll, you know, I'll look into something like that. Um, it's been a while since I've played it. I just, like, I, I'm of the opinion that... I should just do what I enjoy doing. And I'm going to do most of this crap one way or the other. So if I'm going to do it, I might as well record it and throw it out there and hope that you know some people like to watch it. I know that I've gotten really into watching you know, Let's Plays of video games, which I never would have expected. Um, I barely watch regular television anymore. Uh, YouTube is like the TV channel of the future. Or of the present, I guess. I'm probably late to the game. Um, anyway, that's enough for my rambling. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, do all that cool stuff. Um, I will be back tonight at 6 for a live before lock, which is probably going to be the most uneventful one that we've done, just because without any late news, this is a pretty ugly slate. So until then, um, have a good day, and I'll see you guys in uh, like 11 hours, 10 hours. Bye.